Hello, my name is John. Welcome to MCAT Physics and Math. In this video, we will be discussing pendulums. The pendulum is like a yo-yo, with a string hanging down and the yo-yo at the end swinging back and forth. When we talk about pendula or pendulums as simple harmonic oscillators, the displacement we measure is an angle rather than a physical distance like you have for an oscillating spring. But since we're measuring a physical phenomenon, we have to use radians in this case. And that's because there is a direct physical relationship between going all the way around in a circle, 2 pi radians, and the actual distance traveled, 2 pi times the radius. Right, whereas degrees is just an arbitrary number that has no physical meaning. Somebody just picked 360 because it's conveniently divided up into chunks. So this is the one case on the MCAT where you might have to worry about radians. The simplest thing to remember if there is any conversion at all is, again, 2 pi is equal to or equivalent to 360. Now, for a pendulum to be a simple harmonic oscillator, the angle has to be small. And we'll talk about why that is in just a second. So we're talking here about small oscillations. You can think in terms of degrees, since that's probably something you have a better sense of. Somewhere under this sort of 10 to 15 degree range would be the maximum amplitude you'd want to have a simple harmonic pendulum oscillation. Anything larger than that, and it's no longer simple harmonic. Um, it becomes much more complicated to describe. Now, the connecting arm of the pendulum must be considered both massless, so that all the mass of the system is concentrated at the end. That's why the yo-yo on the string is a good example, because the string has much, much less mass than the yo-yo itself. And also frictionless. We can't have any damping force from friction in the bearing up at the top, just as you can't have any friction in the floor if you're talking about a mass oscillating back and forth along a, a floor connected horizontally to a spring. The frequency of a simple pendulum is given by this formula here, 1 over 2 pi root g over l. So note that it depends on the acceleration of gravity and also on the length of this arm, this connector, but not on the mass, unlike in the case of a spring block oscillator. So let us consider what provides the restoring force for a pendulum. Well, basically, if you ask yourself the question, why does the yo-yo want to hang straight up and down, the answer is clearly going to be something to do with gravity. Gravity is the force that restores a mass to its vertical position. But the problem with that in this particular case is that gravity is not pointing to the equilibrium position in the picture we have here. In fact, it's only a component of gravity that does that. So the restoring force is, in fact, going to be the sine component of the gravitational force. That's the piece of the gravitational force that points directly toward the equilibrium position. And note here that we're using a little bit of geometry to determine that this angle theta inside this right triangle here is the same as the theta indicated above as the displacement angle for the pendulum in this position. It's not really worth worrying about reconstructing that. You're unlikely to have to do that kind of geometry on the test itself. So if we say that the restoring force, F restore is equal to mg sine theta, you might at this point notice that we have a bit of a problem, which is that one of the conditions for simple harmonic motion was that the restoring force should be directly proportional to the displacement. But the displacement is theta, not sine theta. And so this is why the small angle um, insistence or condition must obtain for simple harmonic motion on a pendulum because for small small values small angles sine theta is basically equal 
to theta. Now this is clearly not the case in degrees because, for example, the sine of 2 degrees clearly can't be 2 since sine is at maximum 1 and that's the sine of 90 degrees. But it is true for radians, so like the sine of 0.1 radians is basically equal to 0.1. And so thus we have the approximation that the restoring force is equal to mg theta and that gives us our condition that the force is proportional to the displacement. So let's do an example here. Suppose we want to make a grandfather clock such that each time the pendulum reaches a maximum amplitude, that is to say, maximum amplitude is a little bit redundant, but just to make the point that when it reaches the amplitude position, its maximum displacement, the second hand ticks forward. How long should the pendulum be? I recommend pausing here, trying to work this out, and to come back and watch the solution. Okay, so essentially, if the second hand is going to tick forward every time the pendulum is at amplitude, meaning it's at, whether it's at plus a or minus a, the maximum angular displacement, that means for one entire period, you're going to have two ticks, that is, two seconds, right? Because, you know, think about a grandfather clock. It goes tick, tock, tick, tock. The period of oscillation is actually tick back to tick, right? Or tock back to tock. And so that's two clicks. So that's two seconds. So we want a period for our grandfather clock of two seconds. And using the equation we had on the preceding slide and also the fact that the period is equal to 1 over the frequency, we can write that the period is equal to 2 pi root L over G. And if you forget which order the terms go in in a formula like you know this period or frequency formulas, you can just check your units really quick. We want seconds to come out of this. So you've got meters for L and you've got meters per second squared for G. So it's going to be meters over meters per second squared, which is second the square root of second squared, which is seconds. So that's correct. It can't be G over L because that would be 1 over seconds. All right, so what we're going to do at this point is set equal these two values. We have 2 is equal to 2 pi root L over G. So the 2's cancel, and we can write this as 1 over pi is equal to square root of L over G. At this point, I would approximate pi as 3. We're going to square both sides, which leads us to 1 ninth is equal to L over 10, right, because G is roughly equal to 10, which gives us L is equal to 10 over 9 meters, which is 1.1 meters, roughly. And this is why, in fact, grandfather clocks are tall, because if you want a simple pendulum that's going to have a period of two seconds, which is how those clocks are designed, you need, a, you need the pendulum to be over a meter long, you know, somewhere on the order of 40 to 45 inches long, depending on exactly how you're designing the pendulum. And so that's quite long, and this is why these clocks end up being tall. So in summary, pendulums can be approximated as simple harmonic oscillators if you assume that the maximum angle, the amplitude of the oscillation, is small. And you want to remember also that unlike for the spring block system, where the period and frequency depended only on qualities that were intrinsic to the system, namely the mass of the block and the spring constant of the spring. For a pendulum, the period and frequency depend on gravity, local gravitational acceleration, g. And so that means, for example, if you had the option of taking either a wind-up watch, which runs on a spring, or a grandfather clock, which runs on a pendulum, to the moon, you'd want to take the watch because the spring-loaded watch will keep the same period of oscillation. Every second will still be a second, whereas the pendulum clock, the grandfather clock, would slow down when g decreased going to the moon, and so your clock would no longer keep good time.